Okay, so uh, we left uh, with uh, some uh, list of questions about uh, the meaning of these uh, uh, different uh, function declarations. And uh, I think uh, one way to clarify what is happening is to have a look uh, at uh, uh, the JavaScript tutor, um, where I try to write two uh, function definition, one in the classical way, okay, with function, name, and body, and the other with the functional expression. Okay, so in this case, uh, what, I'm, what I'm highlighting here from function to the um, closing brace uh, is just an expression, like if I wrote uh, three plus one, okay, it's an expression. The only, or uh, if you are uh, you know, creating an object, uh, A uh, has the value of three, this is an expression that start at, that has a value of, of type object. This one is an expression that has a value of type function. Okay. And if I uh, execute this code, I see that uh, uh, what is happening is that I'm defining two variables locally. And this variable point to different objects of type function. And uh, finally, there's no way of telling the difference. Uh, whether I define a function like this or like that, or the first or the second way. What is important is, it, is that in my code, I have a reference stored into a variable that points to that function. With that reference, I can call the function. That's the only important thing. So if I want to call the function increase, I maybe I define a, a variable a equal to five, and then I increase and, and declaring a, and then declaring b equal to increase of a. And b, uh, let, not lab, let b of increase a. And uh, it's not strange that b takes the value of a because I'm calling the function increase with the value five. A, with a value of a, which is five, and then I returning five plus one that is stored into b. Okay, when in, in, on this line eleven, the only thing is happening is that uh, increase is a variable that points to a function. So I can call the function if I have the value of this variable. Nothing more. Okay, if I uh, copy the Maybe it's too long to write increase. I um, in, I just called ink as increase. Now I want to create a shortcut. This is another variable ink that points to the same function. You see there that ink is also pointing to the same function. So I could increase again b by calling the function ink. There's no difference between calling ink and calling increase because there are two different uh, references to different variables that point to the same function. Okay, and the, the same as decrease, there's no difference. In the first syntax, uh, you are creating a function and creating a variable that points at the function at the same time, right? Because you see the function here function increase and also a variable increase declared in your scope. In the second case, we are declaring the function and then saving this function into a variable. And so I am creating this variable decrease explicitly in my code here. While you don't see any let or const of the increase name, in the first case, because it was created implicitly by the function keyword. Okay. Um, if um, yes, like uh, whenever you define a function in the first case, in the first syntax, you are automatically already creating a variable for that. Okay, but like it's normal, you don't you don't even need to think about it. By the way, if, if, if you could also write something like, uh, sorry, function 
uh, yeah, if I no uh, decrease. This expression just creates another type of function for the second declaration. Um, yeah, okay, I, I think I understand what you get, uh, what, what you're saying. When I'm copying this reference here is the same as this one. The, the main difference is that this expression doesn't have a name by itself. I gave it a label deck here. And you see that it's ca called function dec for decrement. But if I'm trying to call the decrement uh, b equal to decrement of b, I can do decrease, of course, and then b will uh, become 6 again after I increase it to 7. Maybe I can change a variable. But if I can, if I try to call deck, which is the name of the function, well, this deck is not a variable, it's not defined because it's not a variable accessible to me. Okay. So uh, the important thing is this name actually is not used for anything other than uh, in debugging, maybe they will tell you that you are inside a function called deck. Okay, but uh, the, you cannot use this name here for calling the function. So you can also try, uh, normally forget about it. You can, it's optional. It's a function. It's not called sorry, It's not called deck anymore, but it's still a function. Um, okay. Uh, there's also one, so there's nothing really strange here, okay? The only difference is that, uh, the main difference, uh, for, apart from the creation of the name, is that uh, for defining a function, you must be in a block statement. You must have one statement for declaring a function, another statement uh, for doing something else. In this case, it's just an expression. So you could also be inside a bigger expression, for example, I want to create an array of operations or uh, maybe the first one is increasing and the second one is decreasing. So in the first one I create function uh, for, for x return x plus 1 and in the second function Uh, x return x minus one. Uh, okay, so you see what I did? I created operations, which is an array. This array has two elements. The first one is here and the second one is there. The elements of this array are not strings, are not numbers, they are functions. Okay. Uh, and then I can, if I want to do an operation on a number, I could, uh, okay, instead of writing increase, I could do operations of zero over A. Uh, we are using functions as normal values with the function expression. I can reuse this instead of just uh, storing it into a, a variable. I can use this value for putting it uh, somewhere else. Uh, that one well, maybe in this case not very no, uh, convenient to do that, but we'll see in a moment. Okay, how I would get how it gets more convenient. This function doesn't have a name. There's no name. There's no way of calling it explicitly by name. The only way is to find its reference because it's part of the array. So I need to know the name of the array, the location zero on the array, and then I can call it. Okay. 
Um, a couple of more details. Uh, um, so, Claudio, is normal console.load doesn't work in function? No, it's not normal. It will work normally also in functions. So maybe you have some syntax error somewhere, but console log still works even inside functions. Why did you write C equal to dex C? I cannot find dex anywhere. Okay, right, you're right. Uh, I initially wrote dex here as the name of the function, basically to show that this instruction is not valid in any case. And you see here, uh, opera, sorry, operations with T. Um, deck is not defined. Okay, so this is, uh, is an error in any case. So the name, if, I use, if I'm using a function expression, the name that they give to this function cannot be used for calling the function. So this, uh, in, a, in any case, it's an, it's an error. Um, can we put a dot instead of equal where? Of saying I don't understand uh, uh, like this uh, uh, equal function. No, uh, I don't think it's uh, the doctor is as, as any syntactic meaning in this case. So uh, I can. Carlo Vitali is also suggesting doing something like uh, const uh, operations uh, equal to. Uh, Increase, decrease. Of course, maybe it has all its operations too, because otherwise there will be a clash of names. And uh, it's the same. Hmm? You are creating an array that contains functions that are being defined before, and they are being defined as a regular function, a classical function, or as a function expression. You don't care. They behave in the same way, even when you are putting them inside the some data structure. Um, okay. And so everywhere hmm, we can uh, define functions and store them somewhere. Uh, there's a question of uh, Giuseppe who was asking, can, uh, so okay, we can use something like Lambda functions? Yes, of course, 90% of JavaScript is callbacks. Uh, we'll see that on, on Monday, okay? Uh, how to pass a function as a parameter to another function, which is the key pattern of programming in JavaScript. So we are just getting ready with all the, with all the ingredients, but that will be uh, the key point. Um, we don't need uh, even to, defin to define Lambda expression as something new in the language. Just uh, knowing that the uh, uh, a, a function is an object that allows you to do what you do in other languages with Lambda expressions. Um, okay, okay. Uh, so I understand what Jose uh, is, is saying right now. I'll come to that in a moment. So when functions are stored inside objects, you can do that, but you can do that only inside an object. I will come in a second. Um, okay. Yes, sir, is asking, uh, create another function with the name DEC. Of course you can, but it will be a different function. Or you can uh, just uh, assign also a shortcut, shortcut to decrease. And uh, you can do that because this name is not a name in the, in the current scope. And so there's no confusion between this variable declared here and that label. Hmm? This is just documentation, okay? The name of a function expression. In many cases, it's, it's uh, left out. Okay. Uh, benefits of uh, benefits are uh, they are more or less equivalent, but we will we'll work a lot on, on best practices huh, when we do something more complex. Uh, Salem is uh, complaining about the semicolons. Uh, semicolons in normal normally in uh, in JavaScript are optional, so you can put them or not. Uh, and if the um, interpreter finds uh, uh, tries to insert semicolons in the right places, okay. Uh, I tend to to write them uh, on, or to put them always just for avoiding ambiguity, uh, because there are some cases in which the interpreter doesn't get guess right uh, no, the position of the semicolon, but you can leave them out. Okay, uh, there were some question about uh, can I modify the value that has been passed 
to a function. So uh, let's say we modify increase, okay? Not to do, not to return x plus one, but to modify directly the value of x. So I want to modify increase like x equal x plus one. What happens? So the function is valid. Uh, let's try to see. Let's try to see. Uh, maybe we, we forget about the rest for a moment. Uh, let's put that in a comment so that it doesn't. Uh, okay. I have this function increase. I have an A equal to five, and then calling increase of A. Let's put the semicolons. What you see is that A is still five. It doesn't become six. But you told me that the passing value is always by reference. Yes, but remember what the reference is, okay? Uh, if we go back and we execute this statement by statement, okay, we are defined, we define the function increase, okay? We execute a equal to five and we get to five. Then let's go inside the function. Inside the function, we have a variable x that takes uh, points to the same uh, five that was passed as a parameter. So the reference to A is passed as a reference to X. X and A are now aliases, two different names for the same object. And this object is number five, okay? Uh, Andrea, we are trying to modify the value of the parameter. So that's why we don't have any return. Um, so I expect A to be modified and try to understand why it doesn't. Hmm? But when we execute this instruction, AX equal X plus one, look here, inside the function increase, we have a new X. It's not the same. We redefined the pointer. We didn't change the value. I don't know if it's clear. Um, maybe it's more clear if we, instead of uh, having um, a number, we had an object like uh, maybe x equal to zero. I don't know. maybe we want to increase uh, not x let's call it uh, p and and for number sorry and so we want to in uh, do something with this object so let's go back Uh, see, when we are inside the increase function, we see very well that what we had an object called A. We go inside the function here, and we have uh, the parameter of the function X that is a reference to, say, to the same object. At this point, I can, for me, I can, it's possible to modify the value of the object. There's nothing against that. I could do x point n equal to something and it will be modify this value here and the value will also be modified for the, for the color function. But I cannot do x equal to something because as soon as I do x equal to something, it will create a new local variable x inside the function. when I is sort of a let no like I do a sort of a let x uh, that creates a new variable uh, no it's not uh, it's equivalent it's not syntactically the same I'm creating a new local variable that didn't exist before oh well the variable is the same but it points to something different okay so always be aware when you are doing equal if you have two variables that point to the same object 
and you are, uh, you reassign with equal one of these variables after the equal they will not point to the same object anymore because one of them has been diverted to a different object so if you want to modify a value that you received you must be careful not to break the alias so never redefine with equal the value of the parameter in this case you cannot do that uh, with an integer number because integers are immutable so there is no way of modifying an integer you can only create a new one like with a string you cannot do that so in this case it's not possible but if it were an object i could very easily do um, x point n equal x point n plus one and where am i sorry and a would become one because i inside the function i have a reference to the parameter the parameter is a type of data in this case it's an object that can be modified i am modifying the value inside the, the object pointed by the parameter but i'm not modifying the parameter itself the parameter is a copy it's a local copy if i try to modify the local copy i'm losing the link with the with the color object but if I'm using my local copy to modify the object that it's pointing to, I'm free to, to do whatever I want. Okay? It's like a, a pointer in C, basically. You receive a pointer. If you change that pointer, you forget uh, where it was pointing before. But if you dereference a pointer and use the fields, uh, then you can access the, the original data. Uh, adding, deleting, modifying, whatever. You have a full reference to that object. You can do whatever you want with that object. Uh, so carlo is x was pointing to a new object yes because we were reassigning the value of the pointer so it's pointing somewhere else and it's creating a new local variable yes that was be shown um, is there a way to access the, uh, the address of a variable i don't know but i don't see any reason to that where i need it uh, you are not uh, pointing to real memory here. Okay, it's an interpreted language, so maybe memory addresses can also change at the runtime. You don't, you don't, you don't want to see them. Um, why x plus n doesn't reassign the explanation reference to a new object? Um, this one. Uh, you are not reassigning anything basically you are you are you are actually no sorry you are reassigning the value of this n property before this n was pointing an o to an object called zero then this value is pointed to an object called one so we are redefining the object to which property n is pointing to yes we are we didn't change the zero into one it's not possible to change the zero into one we change the reference n that previously was pointing to a zero and now it's pointing to a one i constructed a new object one here with this addition and i stored what well, we changed the reference n to point to this new object with numbers it's difficult to see because numbers look looks the, the same okay it looks like you change the number no actually it's a different object with a different value uh, that's why with objects or with arrays it's easier to see um ruggero we always pass by value the reference of the object yes this is the rule we are always passing references and these references are passed by value so if you happen to modify the reference inside you lose the the link with the with the color hmm? it's the basic mechanism is there a way to change the value of x and return another one yes of course you can put a return here and do whatever you want uh, i don't know x dot n plus times four or well, there's no limit of what you can do 
if x is an integer you cannot change its value you can only return a new value because integers are immutable so there's no way you can modify them from inside the function we're still passing a reference well yes you can think about that think if it were a reference to an object and this object happens to be an integer don't be fooled by the fact that uh, these numbers are shown here imagine the one uh, as the test then uh, the interpreter makes some optimizations on numbers and so on but don't don't worry don't uh, don't think like in java that you have uh, primitive types uh, and uh, object types and they behave differently here everything is an object even one even zero okay always think about a variable that takes a, holds a reference to the object of type number with value zero and that object cannot be changed but they can change a reference to point to a different object with value one okay. then inside the compiler it can do some optimizations but from the mental model we let's always think about the variable that points to an object with a value uh, integers and strings are immutable and so you need uh, no 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 wait 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 Cosma uh, there are two different two separate problems um, let me make another example so maybe it's more clear because numbers are too simple let's call a function to add an element uh, to an array okay add one element to an array so let's append one for example okay function and one to an array a okay and they want to modify the array so what could they do what could do a equal to we learn that that right so a is a reference to an array i'm adding one so i'm taking the previous elements of a and then I'm, 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 i add one right so I, if I create my array of uh, let uh, c equal to one seven five, I can append and the one at the end of c. But c didn't change. I called it, but it didn't change. Because with this instruction here, with A equal, I broke the link. Let's go step by step. I define in C. Okay. Now I call the function. And in the function, I see the parameter A, okay, is an alias to the value C. But then I redefine the variable of A to point to a new array that, where is that? Uh, yeah, is the right one. I really computed the, the value that he wanted. Yes, but it's a new one, it's unlinked from C because I changed the reference. And so when the function is finished, C is not modified at all. Hmm? The solution, as Carlo is mentioning, is to avoid and try to use some methods of A, like push, that really act, modify, act on the object A that is the same as C. We, we should not separate A from C. And in this case, it's working. okay so uh, what is what should you should be aware of is uh, the equal sign mm -hmm. equal really disconnects uh, the reference from the local variable 
so whenever you are trying to modify the parameter and not a return a new value but modify the, the formal parameter um, always uh, try to find methods to modify the object itself and not recreating a new object hmm? uh, of course if, if you return marco uh, you can do that but then you change the con contract of the function because you need uh, from the caller to write c equal to c to append of c so always have in mind does man there are two different different design choices does my function return a modified copy of the array or does my function modify the array in place that they give as a parameter you can do both hmm? but you must be clear you cannot mix the two because otherwise you'll be in making in certain bugs okay so either you, you create a new array and return it and don't modify it, the, the parameter or modify the parameter and you don't return anything. You can do both, but then probably the interface will not be so easy to understand, right? But this is just functions and parameters. The interesting part, if it's, uh, I think it's more clear here, and uh, all the questions that you have uh, about here, about what is the difference between this and that and that, uh, came down to there's no difference. The important thing is that we have a variable or a reference for calling the function. I so can add a new um, and th this method, I, I will say that next week uh, we'll see how to create methods and callbacks, which are the normal power where the normal power of functions in JavaScript will come out. But first, uh, we need to see. Um, we need to see uh, the um, the third way. Uh, let me understand, let me reply to uh, to Umberto, which is saying the function declaration, the classical function declaration, hoist. So they are moved at the top. Yes, because if you define a function at the top level in a file, it can be called from whatever point in the file. So it's like you declare that at the first line. Uh, and the others don't depends it depends if you're using const or let oh, sorry or var if you're declaring a function with var it will hoist like any other var in, the, in your code so it's up to you to decide whether you want it local or you want it at file level um, so the, the third way of declaring function is with the, the arrow syntax this arrow here where you get rid totally of the keyword function so you are not using the keyword function anymore like here and you are just uh, instead of function you write an arrow here so you have the parameters arrow and then the body of the function with the braces it's another way of uh, writing a function expression which is similar to it so in our code we could uh, just modify uh, in this way and one and one let's comment this one because otherwise i have a clash it's okay I'm using a function expression. So I declare a variable to point to a function object. And this function object is declared with the arrow syntax. So parameter A, return value, or also body of the function is uh, uh, a.push1. And it behaves in the same way. Uh, it should okay i didn't call it sorry append okay a is not defined of c sorry i get hmm? okay and it works in the same way 
if you want you can call it a lambda function there's no notion of lambda in uh, in javascript there's no need it's just a function okay like any other function you declare it in line it's just an object uh, of type function there's no different no okay there are some differences that you will see them next time like uh, saying function parameter a and this body they are the same it's just two different syntax for the same uh, operation the second one is lighter it's easier to write so we tend to use it more often one three let's don't get confused this arrow has a strict precedence over this equal so it's actually like uh, like that okay this uh, is the value that we are assigning to append uh, and furthermore with this arrow syntax there are additional shortcuts uh, okay so we see here in the slides different ways of defining the same the same function of course once you open the brace here you can also spam multiple lines okay not here and you know, not in this case but uh, here i uh, i added on one line but i could also write it many lines of course hmm? so until i find the closing brace i'm still inside the body and in which which means i'm still inside this, this expression that starts here and ends there so you can have very strange expressions that contain big bodies of functions like we did here for example okay in these op operations that we defined an array of functions maybe it was easier to write them as arrow function it would be more compact hmm? but it's just a matter of syntax uh, and the arrow function can be simplified for example when you have no parameters uh, okay of course you can just a, a pair of a parentheses but when you have only one parameter like in our case you can drop the parentheses and uh, of course when you have more than one parameter uh, you need the parentheses to make the syntax clear um, you can have some default values but this is also true for other uh, functions and uh, you can have uh, you can drop like in this example here you can drop the braces if the only operation that you have is a return of a value Okay, so this really looks like a lambda because you like to call it like that. Uh, it's a one parameter where I dropped the parentheses because there's only one parameter. And the body where I dropped the braces because the body only consists of one statement and this statement is a return. So I can drop the braces and just write the value that should be returned. So this is very, you know, very compact way of writing functional lambdas so when i take one parameter i get one result um, the dario is asking whether the arrow functions are basically the same as uh, functional functional expressions uh, yes but hmm? yes but because for what we are doing right now they are behaving in the same way they are different in the behavior with respect to the this keyword we will have this 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 uh, in objects okay refers to the job object itself where we are calling the method and it has a special behavior in javascript very strange and that's the point where the two types of functions are uh, behave differently okay we we'll see that we will have a future uh, lecture where we focus on, on on the behavior of this which is very important because uh, it creates all sorts of bugs uh, for what we are doing now so for defining function methods callbacks and so on they are equivalent okay only when you are going to objects uh, and uh, calling methods uh, that they will behave differently and so we have to choose for for the moment they are equivalent huh? okay um it follows easily that since functions are just values you can define functions wherever you want even inside other functions there's nothing you're just declaring a variable of type uh, function 
okay so there is no need to have special syntax or whatever just okay you're declaring instead of here i'm declaring a, um, a function because i need it inside this function so it's declared with const so it's uh, it's visible only inside the function itself i can call it like a normal function and it will be destroyed at the closing brace it's very natural no, to define local functions especially with the arrow function because it's more compact but nobody, nobody prevents you also from using the full syntax the classical syntax inside other functions there's nothing um, there's a strange thing though that when you are uh, defining a function inside another function the inner function may access the variables declared in the outside function so this is not the case here because these are pure functions so they only depend on the value of the parameter but here i could write plus a for example and a is not a variable defined inside this function is not a parameter given to this function it's a name <clears throat> sorry of a variable defined in the outer function so an inner function can also refer to the values of parameters and variables declared in the outer function huh? this mechanism is called the closure and we talk about that um, of course we cannot call we cannot do the reverse okay you cannot call um, no square is not visible from outside okay it's only a, a local variable and as uh, like all the local, local variables is only visible inside the function okay so the, the visibility is from the inner function to the outer function from the outer function you cannot access x or from outside the function hypotenuse you cannot access a square okay um so uh, closure is a powerful concept this is the definition a closure in is a name given to a feature in the language by which a nested function executed after the execution of the outer function can still access the outer function scope it's not very clear right this is the official definition what does it mean uh we, we we really must uh, must uh, you know, uh, understand what it is because it's one of the key concepts for creating objects and classes in, in Java, basically in JavaScript. So um, imagine, let's start with the new code. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's make an example together instead of just following the, the slides. Okay, let's imagine. Uh, you want to make uh, uh, your, your function okay you want to make a counter something that increments every time so you can um, you could define an object where or something no an object yes that uh, as a function to increase it every time but i cannot write just uh, uh, okay function count uh, let uh, c equals c plus one because this c will get lost every time i call count it will not be increased but will be uh, recomputed from from scratch it will not be remembered in different uh, uh in different uh calls of the function even if i count call sorry return c okay i cannot do that because if i write console.log of counter it will write me a very good undefined because c doesn't have a default value i can put a, a default value of of to c but uh, so it will so return uh, dot count it will print me one 
but if I print it twice, it will give me one again because, of course, I have to reinitialize it uh, uh, anytime. So, what could I do is to have a function uh, that holds a value and gives me a way of increasing this value. What I want to do is to let somebody outside the function count to, to execute this, in, this increment. So I can call the increment as a function. Uh, increment would be just an arrow function that would increment the value of C. Okay, so what I'm doing here is making a function that will uh, increment the value of C. Increment will not modify the, its own variable, but it will modify the variable of the outer function. So every time I call this function, C will be incremented. How can I call this function from outside? Because I want to call it from outside, of course. Well, it's easy. I just return the value, the, the, the function, the caller. So I can create a, a counter. Uh, to be count. So what did I do? I created a function that returns a function to increment a number. So this counter that I have here as the return value is, uh, sorry. I didn't go to up to the end. Increment is not defined. Oh, sorry, let. I have a counter that is a function. You see here, it's defined as a arrow function. Every time I call this counter, C will increase. So I call counter, I call counter, and it will increase. Uh, the problem is that I don't see the value of C because it's not being returned by the counter. So I need to write a couple of statements here to return the current value. So right now I can pro print values that keep increasing. Okay, so I'm, I have two functions that do different things and they call them at different times. When I ca ca call count, maybe let's change the name it, make counter, make a new counter. It creates a variable C and a function to increment that variable C. If I call counter many times, counter is just a name for increment. Okay, remember that make counter returns this arrow function. And when I call counter, actually I'm calling this function here. Uh, when I call counter, it will only call this function, so we will not execute this instruction anymore. C will not be given uh, back, brought back to zero. C will be set to zero only when we call make counter. 
only when you create a new counter. Okay. What we have here in mind, in, in our hand, is a, a function. The only thing I have is a function. But that function, that function internally, still as a reference to C, which was the variable created by the previous function. Let's try to see it step by step. We enter into make counter, right? The encounter is the, this function. I enter into the function. I create the variable C, which is defined in the scope of make counter. So it's a local variable to this function, private. It will be recreated every time we call this function. Then we define this function increment. OK. It's here. Sorry, I didn't know what I did. And I return it as a return value to the caller. And the caller, we store it inside counter. Now we see that the function frame for make counter disappeared because we, I returned from the function. And so the variable C disappeared, except inside the, the definition of, of this function counter that still remembers that specific variable it doesn't make a new one there's no let here there's no creating a new variable i'm incrementing a variable which is local in the scope of my container function it's not a parameter i'm not if, if it were a parameter i could not increment it because it would be my value okay I'm not incrementing my parameter. I'm incrementing, let's say, a global variable from the point of view of this function, but, but it's not really global. It's this one. It's local. It's local, but to a container function. So when I call this, I'm really going back here and say, OK, uh, I have, uh, right now, I am in the scope of this arrow function. I'm in the, during the execution of this arrow function. And I have a reference to the variable C of my parent. And I increase it, I increment it, and I return it. The return value will be one. And then I can log this value to one. If I call the function again, I'm again executing this with a reference to the same variable that now still has the value one. So it's like uh, this variable looks like it's dying. It, will, it should be destroyed when we reach the end of function make counter because it's a local variable. But the general rule is not that a variable or an object is destroyed when it reaches the closing brace. The variable C is destroyed, but the object not. The object is not destroyed because there is somebody still having a reference to that object. And this, this function is still has a reference to an object where the function that created that object doesn't exist anymore. So it's a zombie object in a way. What we say is that the inner function has a closure over variable C. So it means as a reference to the variable C. And this variable will survive even after the make counter function has ended. And every time I call this function, I still access to that object. Hmm? It's not easy to see at the first time. Uh, so mm, so uh, Alfredo saying, how is the value C still preserved? I will call it multiple times because we are calling this instruction only once. And so it's uh, only been created and set to zero once at the beginning, only here when we call make counter. If we want, we can call a second counter and we can see that it will increment independently from the other one. Uh, you see that if I make a counter two, 
it will start from one again because it will be another c another c value hmm? another variable but only when we call make counter the c is created and set to zero why isn't c destroyed after make counter finishes mohammed asking because there is still a reference the variable c is destroyed but the object pointed by c is still remembered by this function and this function is not destroyed because we are remembering it, it in our counter variable um, it's like a static variable more or less like a property of an object this is the basic mechanism we could call this a property and we could call this a method of an object so the state of an object is called some, is made of some properties that are remembered or can be manipulated by its methods so we are we will be using this mechanism of closures everywhere we have a function that remembers a value and this value is outside of the function and many copies of the same function here one and two remember different versions of that variable um why are there parentheses after counter here yes because increment counter is, a, is not a value if i only had a value it would be a number i cannot do anything with a number it's a function counter you see it is a function so i need to call this function that's why we have the parentheses in order to execute the function body and have the and, and get the new the new uh, value if i only wrote uh, without parentheses i would have just uh, try to print uh, the function object not executing the body of the function object okay that's why when you have a function we must call the function and we print the return value uh, what does return c do here it makes the value of the counter available to me because otherwise if i if i didn't put this return statement i would increase c but nobody would be able to see it to know the current value uh, and if i return it the caller when i call the counter function it will return me a value that i can print here and see the value um, it's necessary to put a semicolon no semicolons are optional so i don't always remember to put them what does it happen to if we add a line counter to we are making a new counter uh, to answer manuel uh, yes sir if c equal is creating another object different than one point but let's see uh, we are creating the object here and here we are just modifying the value pointed by that object but the object C is the same. It's, it's this one. Like, like if you are inside the code, you are modifying the value of a local variable, except that you are modifying it when that local variable doesn't exist anymore. This is the difference. There's, there's no, nothing special. We are, not, mm, we are not breaking some alias with some ex something external um com compare with this code this would be useless because this function would try to increment uh, a parameter that it received it doesn't work we know that it will not be modified the only trick why it works uh, because it modifies a, a um a variable outside it and so the, this variable will still be alive even with this function is not alive hmm? this variable is alive even when mac counter has finished and increment is not being called it's just being this variable c is just being remembered i remember c i'm not destroying this value because somebody remembers counter and counter remembers c and only when counter runs when increment runs c can be accessed and modified um, 
and uh, you're asking me what happens if I write uh, again counter without the two, it will keep increasing the first one. Sorry, I need to comment this one. It will keep increasing the first one. They are two independent counters because we have the same function that works on two different objects. And each one remembers its own local private copy, zombie copy of the variable C. Uh, Andrea, this is possible because functions are objects in JavaScript, otherwise we would should not maintain the value C. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, not really. Uh, you can do that also. Closures also exist in Java, for example, where functions are a different class uh, of objects. Um, basically, the, the rule is that uh, a, a, a nested function can keep and remember references to outside variables uh, as long as this function is uh, is still valid, is still uh, alive. Okay, so this is the concept of, of closure. Then the fact that functions are objects make also very easy to pass them around to redefine and so on. But there are two different mechanisms that are combined together. Uh, Giuseppe, the stack frame of make counter call is still maintained because it recognizes that somebody outside is referring something, some things from the stack frame itself. Uh, no, uh, it's not the whole stack frame. If I add another variable here, let x equal to 33, that would not be remembered. I am not remembering the full stack frame of the make counter. I'm only remembering those specific objects that still keep a reference from some other functions. So it's not the whole function, but only specific objects, uh, depending on whether some functions are still linked to, the, to them. Okay, I think the, the garbage collector can, can destroy X because it doesn't is not used. Okay, X, sorry, the variable C and the variable X are destroyed immediately. The value 33 can be destroyed value, not, not variable, can be destroyed by the garbage collector because it's not referred pointed by anyone any longer. The value zero cannot be destroyed because it will be pointed by one reference inside this function. And this function cannot be destroyed because it's still remembered by another variable. Okay, so it's just uh, keeping alive the chain of references. It's not different from what you have uh, when you have an array of an array of an array of objects and you the garbage collection doesn't destroy the destroy one object because it still has some references. Is the same, except that the references come from inside the function. Okay, so functions are a type of containers in some way, like uh, uh, arrays. Mm -hmm. But the behavior, of course, that stems uh, is very different. Um, so the behavior working also for other features, yes, because it's the general behavior of the garbage collector and the remembering the references. Alessandro, could we start uh, set a starting point passing on parameter for the first time? Yes, of course. You could start uh, start equal to zero, and then C equal to start, and then you have uh, your uh, counter that can start from zero, like here. Or if you make a counter counter true, I, I want to make it start from ten. It will start uh, from ten and will deliver eleven. Yes. Um, what's the pro uh, Vincenzo? What's the proper way of calling this property closure? Closure. Okay. Now we can read it. Re read it is in which a nested function executed after the execution of the outer function, so the incre increment function is nested and it will be executed after the make counter function is finished. Can still access the outer function scope, some variables that are, were in the scope of the outer function. Um, can we start the counter with the counter equal to make counter at the end, uh, Andrea? No, uh, or yes and no, meaning that if I do counter equal to make counter again, I'm not restarting the counter, I'm creating a new one. Maybe the same, may look like the same, but the, the old one, well, that uh, is not accessible anymore because we forget about the reference, but uh, we are not really restarting it. 
for restarting it, uh, we would probably need uh, and a second function to call. We are being limited right now because we only have one function that we can call, which is this increment. We'll see in a second how we can add more functions, one for increment, maybe one for decrement, one for restart, to be called on the same closure. Um, so, it, Andrea, it will work for creating a new counter from zero. You're not really restarting that one. Uh, Salem, it returns C, returns the value of C to the caller. How does the caller get counter, get the reference to increment without uh, or writing the value of C? No, the uh, counter get the reference to the increment uh, without overwriting the value of C. The, uh, this return is returning the value, three. With this number three, I cannot do anything to the variable C. The variable is still hidden from me. The only code that can access that variable is the code inside these braces. Nothing I can do outside here can see or modify the value of C. It's still hidden. Is there a gadget collector? Yes, yes. Uh, the, you don't need to, to care about the memory. It's all automatically collect, gadget collector collected when you don't need it uh, anymore. How can we destroy C when it's not needed anymore? What you could do is a counter equal to undefined, for example. So you are forgetting about the, the arrow function. And uh, when the arrow function will be deleted, also the object C will not be pointed anymore by anybody. And so it can be destroyed if you really need to do that. OK. Or in any case, if this is inside some other function or some other block, uh, uh, when this function will, 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 will terminate, when this variable will terminate, uh, there will be a cascade of, uh, of decreasing the number of references that could lead to the destroying uh, C, basically. Hmm? OK, uh, if we have this uh, in mind, the, the next uh, step could be to okay this is an example i don't know if it's identical but it's very similar what can we do if we want to and this is the last minute uh, hint if we want to have more than one function working so a counter that can count but can also reset and so on uh, there was a, a suggestion by David, uh, so we, we don't return just a, a function, but we return an array of functions. Yes, but maybe it's better to return an object of functions so that we have, may have explicit names. So see what I'm doing here. We have the counter, uh, and what we are in returning is not just one function, but it's an object that contains two properties, and both properties are functions. The one is incrementing and the other is resetting the um, the number. And when I create the counter, I get uh, C will not be a function, but it will be an object. Object with these properties, count and reset. So C dot count of this counter will call this function that will increment the number and C dot reset will call this function, the second function that will reset the value of the, of the, of the number. Okay, so we have a function that sets some state, low local status and creates an object that contains the functions that I want to use to modify that state. Each function is a property of the object, and so can be called with the syntax object dot property parenthesis for calling the function. So this is the object, this is the property, and this is the call of the function. And this function is executed inside here. It could be a, a, an expression function or an arrow function is the same for the moment. And uh, uh, we can access directly the closures over the local variables. So they look like methods. There are no real methods in JavaScript. They are just function properties. 
properties of an object of type function. Okay, so it looks like a normal code, but it's based on different foundations. Okay, the three foundations that we have here for doing this code, which is very useful because it encapsulates the behavior of a counter, are dynamic objects. I can create them where I want with the properties that I want. Closures, of course, for maintaining the state and uh, functions as objects uh, that can be passed around and called. Uh, you don't, I don't need to have the name of a function to call it. I just need to have uh, the value. And this value can also be stored inside uh, some property of an object and so on. Okay. Uh, yes, probably this code, uh, yes, will uh, plus plus n will turn on one at the first count. Yes, depends on, on the specification of the count. Uh, as it is returning an object, could we modify it? Uh, there's nothing that can prevent you from modifying the object C. But you can modify, add properties, you will never be able to see this variable because it's not part of the object. Okay. The uh, um, variable n is not part of the object you get. The object only has two, two um, properties. You can add a third one, you can delete these. Uh, you know, you are just doing hurting yourself uh, because you are modifying something that can be useful. Hmm? Okay, so um, I have uh, uh, okay. I, I I think I skip this uh, um, this part. I will spend just five minutes uh, uh, about this fi final part about the functions. Um, in the end of the presentation, we also have a look at another type of objects, which are dates that are used uh, very often. But uh, I, would, I would suggest you, if you have some time, to have a look at the exercises that we published uh, that we can do uh, and can see together the solution uh, on Monday. Uh, we have just to show we, we have three exercises. One is just on arrays and numbers. And the second is on strings and arrays. So the first two are quite easy on the basic string and array mechanisms. The third one here on page four uh, tries to put everything together and uh, construct a building and an object. So a function that returns an object with different methods. Uh, it calls you for creating an exam list of object that has some methods for managing a list of exams. So this would be an application of the last example that we saw we saw today, using closures and objects containing property functions. Hmm? If you want to try to do that, we will see together on, on, on Monday a possible solution together. And uh, if you want to make questions when you try to do that, uh, also during the next days, uh, we are uh, on Slack. OK, so I think we, again, I'm sorry for being over my time. Uh, so we can close the class now. I hope I, you don't have any class right now uh, in uh, overlapping with this. Uh, so if so, please, uh, I apologize with my colleagues for taking their time. And uh, we see you on Monday or on Slack. Bye-bye. <laughs>